So this Cody doc, I know you, I know you haven't seen it. I would say for people who are expecting, uh, any sort of AEW critique or comment, like there's very little in it. You know, you, you do see a little bit of, uh, of the young bucks and some clips and in the building of, of all in, but the most interesting thing about the, uh, AEW discussion is Brandy basically, you know, criticizing, I guess you would say she didn't say the name Tony Khan, but that's who she's talking about for not for allowing them to be without contract. And, you know, you had a little thing in the write up and Cody's been talking about this. He's he hasn't actually said why he left, but he's been um, I'm sure he's been asked about it every single interview that he does. And he's, he's just been kind he's of been, he's been asked about it every single day since February uh, 14th, 2022. <laughs> you know and the, I mean? the latest comment was he said it was the easiest decision that he's made or that he had to make. Yeah, yeah, I saw, like I saw I saw I saw that, that was that was kind of interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I, I mean, I think at the end it, it may have been, you know, like when, look, Vince comes to your house, you're going to main event WrestleMania. You're going to be in the program for the championship. You know what I mean? You're going to make X amount of money. It probably was a, a, at that point, a real easy decision before Vince. I don't know how easy a decision is because Vince flying there, that's, that tells you that you're, you know, because there's always that thing, am I going to go there and get screwed, right? I'm not going to, I'll have more control in AEW or what I do. And once you're satisfied, you're, you're not only not going to get screwed, but you're, you know, they're letting you come in. You can keep, you know, that one of the keys is keeping the music. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? That was a concession because that's not how Vince usually thinks. Mm -hmm. Once they make that concession, it's like, we want, we don't want, you know what I mean? It's like, it's like when, when, when Nash and Hall went back. You know, Vince wants them to be Diesel and Razor Ramon, even though they became way more famous as <laughs> Kevin Nash and Scott Hall, right? Yeah. So you have that even in the Hall of Fame. They went in as D <laughs> Diesel so and, 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 you know, Kevin was just like, you know, it's like, that's what they want. That's fine. But he, he thought, well, he probably, he, Kev, for Kevin, it was really silly. For Scott Hall, he could just, it was the, almost the same character, anyways. But no, but the name, but the name, he was far more famous as Scott Hall than Razor Ramon. Um, and yeah, I mean, the character is the same, but uh, Kevin, the, Ra the Razor Ramon name does hold a lot of, of cachet with wrestling fans though. That is a, to a degree, but he was way, they were way bigger in WCW than they ever were. Num number one, he was Razor Ramon during the darkest days of WWE when they were losing money and they were not that popular and diesel the same way. Then they went to WCW where they were top guys, you know, um, you know, changed the business and it was at the most popular period of wrestling in our lifetime they're much more famous at, under their real names yeah the national but, one was silly yeah but i mean the, the whole the whole thing is that like they didn't you know it was very clear that he did not want, want to bring in dashing cody Rhodes back he wanted to bring the aew cody Rhodes back or in and that's all the difference in the world because vince can be very stubborn that anything that happens outside his parameters doesn't count it's it's not smart i gotta do it my you know what i mean so when he had that that said that you know um you know that they're that they're very serious about him but i mean you know, look he made from, from reading the tea leaves um obviously he made the right call and i think he made the right you know even when that happened i thought he made the right call i i i honestly think that that many of the guys really miss um you know, I, if you want to say the lessons of wrestling wars, um, whether it's, you know, JCP and, and WWE or WWE and, and um, WCW or New Japan and All Japan or whatever. Most of the time when you jump, it's a new lease on life. You're fresh. You know what I mean? All your losses are forgotten about. All your bad things are forgotten about. It's all new and fresh and new opponents and everything. And most of the time... Um, you know, sometimes guys don't work out for different reasons, but most of the time, if you're a top guy, it's the greatest thing in the world to leave, you know, because, you know, usually you're going to get more money too, but that's a different issue. But the thing is, is that like so few do, because if we really look at this, this wrestling thing that we've got going on, right, it's been, um, um, you know, four years basically of, of AW mm -hmm. and the only top, what I'm talking about top guy, the only top guy, I mean, a couple of guys, you know, wanted to go but couldn't contractually go a few okay you know there were about five of them 
Okay. But the only one who actually did go was Cody. And in the other direction, you know, as much as AEW offers a better schedule and, and things like that, I mean, Moxley was gone from WWE either way. Moxley yep. did not jump to go to AEW. He was already done. AEW showed up, so he did not jump. So you really have Chris Jericho and, you know, I mean, you have Gold Dust and Spears and these guys, but, that you know, Vince let them out of their deals. Um, you, so really, of, of the guys, I mean, how many, you know, Brian Danielson and Adam Cole. But, you know, again, with Adam Cole, they, they didn't see him as a main roster performer, which was. Yeah, he uh, already had his, he already had a ceiling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, didn't, they, they didn't. They they saw him as a manager. So for him, it, there was no decision. Um, so Brian Danielson had a real decision. Okay, I mean that's the one. And aside from that, um, I mean, you know, Matt Hardy to a degree, but they were, you know, they weren't high on Matt Hardy. They wanted to keep him because they didn't want him to jump. You know, and Jeff Hardy the same way. Um, but really, when it comes to top guys like actually jumping, it's it's Chris Jericho who who you know, and and you know, and WWE you know, WWE if if Vince had foresight, Chris Jericho would not have jumped because he would have matched the money, and Vince didn't match the money because he thought you know whatever Chris is this age, and I mean I know he wanted to cut that company off and not get anyone, and. Um, you know, when, when Jericho came basically, you know, like, can, can you match it? And Vince said, no, take the offer three weeks later, before they even had a show, Vince had already, Hey, 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 I, I can match the offering. He goes, I heard he signed. Goes, can you, can you get out of it? You know so I mean? So it's like Vince realized he made a mistake on Jericho immediately. He just said something flippant without thinking that this company was actually going to start or that Jericho would actually do it. You know what I mean? So, you know, that happened because of, you know, almost a fluke. I don't say a fluke, but it was a, you know, Vince, if Vince had thought everything out, it probably wouldn't have happened. I mean, it probably at the time he didn't want to, you know, pay as much as Jericho was asking, but at the same time, he wanted to make sure this other company didn't get off the ground. So he probably would have, and, and, and would have, because he said it a couple of weeks later that he would have. Um, so, so really, I mean, as far as like real jumps, you know, it's like Cody Rhodes one way, Brian Danielson, the other, and the rest are all, you know, kind of minor. And, and I mean, I just remember when, when all Japan and new Japan were fighting and, you know, you had Abdullah and you had Brody and you had Stan Hansen, Tiger Jeet Singh. I mean, those guys would go back and forth. Um, Billy Robinson years earlier, make big, big money every time they jumped and freshen up, you know? So it's like, um, it's just interesting to me in this war, there's so much team loyalty and you, you know, and, 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 you know, you're, you're comfortable, you have your friends, you have your uncertainty about the, you know, the other place and everything like that. Um, it's, 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 but there was a lot more jumping in the nineties than there was, there was in this, in this wrestling war. That, that could change though, right? Because if Tony Khan gets a next big deal with uh, Warner brothers or whomever, he can offer bigger money for for free agents. Yes, and he, well, look, he already did. He already did this deal to get all four. You know that that was big, big money. Yeah, so that he, that, so he, that was definitely. Uh, but he also had those guys under his umbrella, so it's not like you know if if they, if yes. those guys were in WWE and he was trying to grab them, that offer probably would have had to be even bit bigger, right? Um, it was pretty big, but, but, <laughs> but, but, but to a degree, yeah. Cause yeah. just, just the idea that unless someone is really unhappy, bringing them over is, is, you know, you, you would say that it's probably easier to keep somebody than it is to it, grab it, it, somebody. History certainly shows that wrestlers yeah. are very reluctant, you know, for whatever reason. And I never really understood it because it's like, you know, in, in other sports, you didn't have the same reluctance. I mean, I remember again, going in the, going in the nineties when, when, you know, guys would call me, and this happened all the time. Guys would call me up and, you know, it's usually WWE guys asking about WCW, but it went the other way too. Um, and there was always this mentality of the, from the WWE, WF guys of, of, um, it's not good for business if we switch sides. And I was going like, what are you talking about? It's like, it's like for your business, when you're, when you plateaued in one place, going to a new place, it's a whole new 
scenario, all new matches and everything like that. It's the right thing for your business, but they just thought, oh, you know, it makes it look bad to the fans. And it's like, actually the fans find it more exciting too, but there is that mentality. And, and, and it, it was there to a degree, even in Japan, but, but less, but it's like, there is that mentality of, of, you know, like, um, you know, and in Japan that, you know, they started you out, you do, there's actually a different level of loyalty because in, when it comes to WWF and WCW, in almost all cases, there's a few exceptions, you start out somewhere else. So you don't even have that. Well, these guys nurtured me when I was not good and they gave me a break when they didn't have to and all that. It's like, no, in most cases, the guys that were on top there, you made yourself a star. They didn't make you a star and they're just, you know, picking you up and in, in both with Vince and, and with, um, you know, I mean, there's guys they made, but, but a lot of the guys were guys who made themselves too. So, um, but whatever, you know, I mean, it's, Yes, in 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 it would cost more to get guys from WWF than you know, and if they sign a new deal and it's worth a lot of money, you know, um, will guys come over? I mean, I think that the guys with families should should consider it a lot, mm -hmm. um, you know. But there's always that thing of WWF is number one, and and um, there is that rush of being there, um, you know. For, for these big shows like SummerSlam that AEW, yes, they will be able to duplicate that at Wembley, but but that's a once in this, you know, period. It's not like it's not like AEW is doing five stadium shows a year, you know what I mean, all over the place. All right, Granny, let's get moving here. <laughs> or not. Uh, not all at once. Ah, uh, wait a minute. Am I supposed to do my... Yeah. I can't find it. Just a minute. What's going over there, Granny? <laughs> I'm getting it. Okay. Did we catch you off guard with our Tuesday night show? Why don't you read another question while we're waiting? Well, I closed the Facebook. Let's see if I can uh, dig it back up here. I'm ready. Sean, okay, I can't believe mind. the faith you have in Vinny to this day. <laughs> All right. Well, never mind. It's absolutely incredible. <laughs> Go ahead, Granny. <laughs> it's been how many uh, years? <laughs> what is happening on this show? <laughs> Granny, I want to know. It's your turn, <laughs> Granny. We're waiting for you. Then don't interrupt. Who interrupted? <laughs> was I just... Eight seconds of dead air. <laughs> hey, guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button, and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show. All of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.